I like iPhone, you like Android, can't we all just get along? System software is all the software that operates your computer and keeps it running smoothly. Uh, now it's divided into two different types. One is the operating system and the other are system utilities. Now the operating system that you're probably most familiar with is Windows. Windows has been by far the most popular operating system for over two decades now. Um, it's the most common operating system for desktop machines and for laptops. It's held an almost monopoly position uh, as the operating system for those sorts of devices. And Microsoft Windows uses a graphical user interface, or a GUI, G-U-I, in order to allow you to manage files and launch applications, right? It's all visual. Um, and the latest version, Windows 8, uses a live tile system on a start screen that was really designed for touch interface, right? Touch screens. And um, that's because Microsoft has sort of a vision that you'll have one singular interface for both your desktop laptop and for your tablet. Um, and there are tablets that run Windows, right? Full Windows that allow you to do anything that you would normally do on your laptop or desktop. Uh, tablets like the Microsoft Surface Pro. Now, another popular operating system is Mac OS X. Mac OS was actually the first operating system to use a graphical user interface, uh, but it's not the most popular. And that's because it can only run on Apple-built hardware, which sort of limits its use. But it's a great operating system. It's actually built on an older operating system called Unix. And that old operating system was originally designed for mainframe computers. And so that makes Mac OS X much more secure and a great multitasking operating system. None of those features were built by Apple. They're part of Unix. They're part of that older system. But Apple has sort of inherited them as they built this newer, fancier looking system on top of the old Unix operating system. And Mac OS X isn't the only Unix-like operating system out there. There's also Linux. Linux was created by a guy named Linus Torvalds at the University of Helsinki. He essentially copied Unix and made his own operating system that worked in the exact same way. Now, what was unique about it was that when he released it, he made it open source. So everybody had access to the source code. They could make changes. They could make it better. And lots of people have. And Linux has evolved over time to become this incredibly useful, amazing operating system that you can get entirely for free. Now, you've probably never heard of Unix or Linux. And you probably haven't used Linux on your home computer. It's not very popular there but where it is popular are on servers, right? On the other side, the people who are sort of operating these web businesses and tech businesses. And in fact, 67.4% of all the websites you visit every day are actually ho housed on Linux servers, right? So it's not very popular from the user standpoint, but it's very popular from you know, the people who actually run websites. And all of the major websites that you probably use on a regular basis. Amazon, Google, uh, Twitter, Facebook, they all use Linux servers to house their websites. Now there is one exception to the idea that you have never used Linux. And that's that several years ago, uh, a company you've heard of called Google took the Linux operating system kernel and built on top of it sort of a new open source project. An operating system that was meant specifically for mobile devices. They called it Android. And it's something that you probably are incredibly familiar with. In fact, several of you probably have Android phones in your pocket right now. Despite a lot of the hype that devices like the iPhone get, Android is actually the most popular operating system for mobile devices. In fact, 81% of the smartphones out there at the time of this recording are all Android phones. Android phone has a lar much larger install base than Apple's iOS operating system. Now, iOS is the name of the operating system used by Apple's mobile devices, both iPhone and iPad. And iOS has a smaller install base than Android, but that doesn't mean that it's a small market. In fact, 67% of all dollars spent on mobile applications are spent in Apple's App Store, right? That's almost twice the number that's spent in the Google Play Store. 
And that means that Apple is sort of a big market for people who want to develop applications for mobile devices. And that's why you'll see that a lot of companies build their apps first for Apple and then later on port them to the Android operating system. And in fact, when we talk about smartphones and mobile devices, we really need to be talking about two different companies. It's not Apple versus Android. It's really Apple versus Samsung. Um, at the time of this recording, those are really the only two players in the market. Um, Apple actually, even though they have a much smaller install base, Apple actually makes more profit on just the sale of smartphones than all of the other Android-based uh, smartphones out there combined. Uh, Apple makes 56% of the profit on the sale of smartphones in the U.S. Now, Android, or actually I should say Samsung, they make up 53% of the profit in the smartphone market. So they're close, but a little bit behind Apple. Now, for those of you that are good at math, you're thinking, that doesn't make sense. How can Apple have 56% of the profit and Samsung have 53% of the profit? And it's because of the sort of a trick in the math. It's because every other manufacturer, HTC, LG, Sam, or, uh, Nokia, um, all of the other handset manufacturers are losing money, right? And so that means that their negative profits or losses actually make Apple and Samsung's profits seem bigger than they should be. But at this point, there are really just two players in the market, Apple and Samsung. Now hopefully that changes because competition always makes things better. But at this point, if you're looking to buy a smartphone, I would probably start with one of those two companies. Now there are other operating systems out, especially in the mobile world, uh, that do have sort of big fan bases, right? People who really love their devices. Uh, Windows Phone, Blackberry, both exist. They don't have a very large market share. There's not a lot of people out there using them but they are incredibly popular. BlackBerry used to be the standard for the businessmen in the, in the you know, United States, that if you were big and important, you would generally have a BlackBerry strapped to your side. And in fact, the president of the United States you know, fought hard to get a smartphone, and the smartphone he fought for wasn't an Android phone, and it wasn't an iPhone. He fought to get his BlackBerry. Now, for system utilities. There are lots of system utilities out there on the market that do all sorts of things. But over time, the operating system manufacturers have started to include more and more of those utilities into the operating system itself. So for your average user, you probably don't need to go out and try and find additional system utilities. The ones that you need are probably already built into the operating system and work pretty well. Uh, but that being said, I want to focus on two utilities especially, right? One is backup and the other is antivirus. The hard drive inside your computer is an amazingly complex device filled with lots of fast moving parts. In fact, it's probably the most complicated solution we could have come up with to the storage problem. And because of all these fast moving parts, it's not a matter of if your hard drive will fail, it's a matter of when your hard drive will fail. And when it fails, you lose all of those files. That could represent hours and hours of work. It could represent things that you could never possibly replace. If you ask your parents, what's the one thing they would grab if the house were burning down and they had to rush out the front door, right? The one thing that they usually say they would want to grab is the family photo album. Everything else can be replaced, but those memories can't be replaced. Well, right now, your family photo album with all this digital photography is on your hard drive, right? All of those memories are stored on a device that has to be hermetically sealed because the presence of dust would utterly destroy it. Now, every operating system out there has a built-in backup utility, whether it's Backup and Restore on Windows or Time Machine on Mac OS X. Take the time to learn how to use them and set them up to operate automatically. The fact is you will forget. You will forget to do your regular backups. But if it's a regular thing, just schedule it. Delegate it out to the computer. You know that the computer is not going to forget, right? And then you can always have that sort of security of knowing that everything you've got is backed up to an external hard drive. It's at least safe in case of a hard drive failure. In fact, you may want to consider backing up all those photos to 
an online cloud storage sort of solution. That way, in case your house actually does burn down, it doesn't take the external hard drive with it. And backing up your computer isn't just reactionary in case something goes wrong. It's also the best offense against viruses and all sorts of digital intrusion, right? If you know that you've got a good and recent backup, it makes it a lot easier to decide to wipe your computer clean and just start over from a fresh restore point. And if you aren't backing up your PC, and let's be honest, most of you are not backing up your PC, right? The most important thing you can do is learn to use your backup software, buy an external hard drive, and make sure you start backing up your computer now. Now the next most important thing you need to do is to protect your computer from viruses. And the way you do that is by installing and using antivirus. Your computer is far more powerful because it's connected to the internet, because it's connected to other people and other machines. But that also makes it vulnerable to viruses and other forms of you know, hacks and digital intrusion. Now when it comes to antivirus utilities, there are some out there that are free and do a great job. And there are some that are big, annoying, expensive, constantly reminding you of what they're doing just so that you'll pay for it the next year. And they also do a great job. When it comes to antivirus, it's not about the brand name. It's not about how much you spent for it. It really comes down to how often you update your virus definitions. That's how these programs actually protect your system, right? By knowing what viruses are out there and being able to detect them before they enter your system and cause problems. Most of you will be very happy with Microsoft Security Essentials. It's a free download just for using Windows. Um, they can't include it as a part of Windows by default just because of legal reasons and antitrust violations. And um, Microsoft is sort of they have to play by different rules because of their size. But they do offer free antivirus, Microsoft Security Essentials, and it's a great product. It works just fine. Just be sure to have it update those virus definitions automatically and often, right? So that you don't have to think about it. It just does it in the middle of the night when you're not using your computer, right? And it'll help protect your computer so that you can keep, um, you know, posting photos to social media and uh, talking with friends and sharing files and doing all the things that you normally do on your computer, right? Let the computer take care of itself so that you can take care of the business and work that you need to do. And there are lots of other utilities out there with more specific needs and you'll learn more about them as you learn to do specific things with your computer, whether that's recording music or editing digital video. Right? But backup and antivirus are two things that everybody needs, especially as the digital things in our lives become some of the most valuable things that we own. And if you get nothing else from this class, just remember, back up your computer. It's going to save you a lot of tears someday. <laughs> <laughs>